What's up everybody, I'm Derek, this is Rocking E-Forge, and today I'm going to be forging a chisel which can be used for cutting into pieces of steel, carving into a figure or a face that you are trying to forge, and things of that nature. Now I'm going to be using this six and a half inch long piece of three quarter inch round 4140 kind of medium carbon steel, and that is going to be the basis for this punch. So, let's get rocking. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is start with the struck end, or the end that you strike with your hammer. And I'm just going to forge a nice, blunt, not super skinny taper, but just kind of a square taper. Now that I've got this taper forged out, I'm just going to nicely knock in the corners here. But I want to keep that square cross section just based on my aesthetic alone. Now I'm going to just spin this around and start working on the business end, uh, which is going to line up with this square cross section. And my goal is to have this as a pretty well just rectangular cross section that just kind of tapers down from square and then flares out at the end to the actual end of the uh, chisel. All right, so the first step to the business end here is I'm going to forge, if I want the plane of the actual chisel to be in this direction, because I've got my flats here and on this edge, if I want the plane this direction, I'm going to turn it on that 90 degree edge and I'm just going to flatten this out. And what that's going to do is it's going to establish the flat sides of the actual chisel and control how much this spreads to an extent when you start hammering down in this direction to start spreading that chisel out. So my, my main goal here is to forge very similar to this chisel with the exception of not doing this kind of thumb swell here. I really like this style of punch and chisel. However, it is Mark Asprey's signature style and as such, uh, I feel like I need to kind of branch out and kind of establish my own style, so to speak, of, uh, of chisel. All right, so I'm going to do just one more heat where I just kind of blend all of that flat into this actual, uh, each of these sides of the taper back here for the struck end and then i'm going to move on to uh, spreading the tip of the chisel and blending that all together to make it look real nice all right so now that i've got the flats of this fully established on two sides i'm going to flip that 90 degrees come back in the next heat and start forging this down to start spreading the tip of the actual chisel and establish that shape and then blend that up the body of the chisel. I am keeping my left hand elevated here as I'm hammering uh, down on this tip here so that I get a similar angle on the back side of this taper. Otherwise, this whole thing would end up kicked off to one side, which is an additional reason why I keep swapping sides, hammering down for a while and then swapping sides to the other, other side just to make sure I'm getting that kind of even pressure and even spreading on both sides of the piece. And an additional thing worth noting here is that I am using the far edge of the anvil to forge this taper, kind of the tapering fundamental that I talk, talked about in my blacksmithing for beginners uh, part one video here back a few weeks ago. And, uh, and that's how I'm getting this spreading, uh, which I also talked about in that video, uh, by simply just using a flat-ish faced hammer and hammering down on that steel. Uh, now I'm use, making sure that when I'm here at the, the tip, I'm using half-faced blows, so I'm not slamming my, the edges of my hammer into my anvil face, 
and, uh, and that's how I'm getting this shape here. But now that I've got this kind of where I want it here at the tip, I'm just gonna start drawing that taper back up toward the, uh, the struck end of the chisel. And we'll bring this to kind of a rectangular cross section all the way up. And now is a good time to mention that if you are striking uh, a wider piece of steel that is still pretty thick, every hammer blow is going to actually locally spread steel at the point of the hammer blow uh, more than it's going to on the flip side or on the anvil face side of the piece of steel and more than it is on the opposite you know, side of the same face that you're striking. So you can see there's a little bit of a bump here, there's a little bit of a bump here that kind of goes out that direction. And all in all, I've got a bit of an S-curve kind of shape to it that I need to correct before I go too much farther here. So the way that I'm going to do that is on the next heat, I'm going to bring this out, I'm gonna lay this edge on the anvil and that's gonna require me to lower my hand just a little bit to get that angle correct. Because if I just came in here and set this down on the anvil with my hand, you know, at normal height relative to the anvil, most of this face would not touch the anvil face and I'd end up getting a curve to it, as opposed to being able to forge in those little lumps on the sides. Now, as you can see, I'm going to rest that full face on the edge and I'm gonna strike down in the locations where I've got a bump. And you will still pick up a little bit of a curve, just kind of by nature of where you're striking and how you're striking. So in order, in order to correct that curve, you just flip over to the opposite side, kind of lay two points along the anvil, and hammer down in the middle until that whole surface or face on the far side reaches uh, or meets the anvil face and everything kind of lines up a little bit better. All right, so uh, I think I've got it about as wide and spread as I want it down near this end. It comes to a bit of a, a flare out uh, to that square cross section up here. I'm gonna flip this around, I already have, but I'm gonna flip this around and I'm gonna work on just kind of blending that nicely up to that square, square cross section there at the tip uh, on the struck end. And uh, we'll be pretty well done with the forging process here. All right, so I'm going to spin this back around now. I think I've got it pretty well where I want it, where it's just got a kind of nice taper that comes back to the struck end and it tapers forward in this, dire uh, in this direction, kind of really smoothly all the way down. And uh, I like the way that turned out. So I'm, uh, now I'm just gonna just take this heat to kind of true this up, make sure that everything is uh, as close to the same thickness or a, a smooth taper as I can in both directions, right? Alrighty, so that is going to do it for the forging portion of this video. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the way this thing has turned out so far. Um, it might require a little bit of refinement in the shaping once we kind of get to the final stages here. I'm going to uh, let this thing cool down and then get to the grinder and grind in the tip of this chisel so that we can uh, get ready to heat treat and then finish this thing up. So I'll see you at the grinder. Alrighty, this thing is cooled down. So first thing I'm gonna do is grind off kind of the ends. I'm gonna take this to a bit of a crown or a rounded uh, end there on the struck end here. And then we'll go ahead and switch to the business end of this chisel and uh, grind everything to final shape. And I'll explain that as I go. Got a 40 grit belt here and I gotta make sure I put the covers back on for safety. And that should be good to go.
All right, so I've got this uh, rough ground to a dome here on the struck end, and I've got the tip of the chisel uh, ground to a little bit of an arc, uh, and that is intentional. This allows you to seat the chisel in a cut, hammer down on it, and then seat the corner in that little kind of groove that you just made, and then ro like rock into the motion and hammer down on the next spot, and you can walk your way across a piece of steel really easily with a little bit of a curvature uh, to the tip of the chisel as opposed to being perfectly flat like you would get out of a wood chisel. Now, the next step I'm going to be doing is uh, grinding this down to a rough, not quite sharp edge yet. Uh, I wanna heat treat before I actually sharpen this. And because it is for use in cutting metal or cutting or chiseling into metal, uh, I'm not going to make this very sharp. And in fact, there's a reason I left this so thick as it is. You want a pretty blunt edge on the chisel, if even having an edge on it at all, because if it was very sharp, you would dull that and create a burr on that edge uh, or round it over just simply by, you know, the first strike into a piece of steel. So you don't want to sharpen these too fine. This is not meant to be an edge that is shaving sharp because it is simply just not used for that purpose. Now, what you'll also see me doing is grinding one of the sides here, and I'm only gonna do it about half an inch or so up the chisel itself, but one of the sides I'm going to grind here to a sharp edge, or sharp-ish edge, similar to what, I've, what I will have on the tip of the chisel. And then the other side I'm going to grind into a rounded edge or a fuller. Um, and that is going to give me uh, two different kind of ways of use, or three different ways really of using this chisel. The first naturally being straight up and down uh, as previously discussed. The second and third being I can turn this chisel on its side and hammer that sharp edge down into a cut that I've made to further refine that cut and open it up or use the, uh, the fuller side to do the same thing. For example, spreading the tines on a fork or something of that nature. All right, so I'm just gonna put my touch mark in here. There you are. Now I'm going to spin this around and we're gonna heat treat, just like I've done with my punches. We're gonna do a quick douse in water after heating up to about a dull orange color. And then I'm gonna scrape the tip, watch the colors run, and we'll temper this thing in situ as we go. So I'm gonna pop this thing back in the forge, let it heat up nice and slow, and then uh, start quenching. And I'm gonna heat up at least half the half the body of the chisel here to let that heat bleed forward so that I can get a good tempering run out of this and uh, we'll be finished. All right, so I've got this at a nice orange heat. And I'm just gonna quench that tip until it is dark. And then I'm gonna take it and scrape all that scale and stuff off because I want to see this thing turn a kind of a straw yellow color is what I'm going for here and I'm keeping it up off the anvil so that it doesn't steal all of the heat out of the uh, the piece and I'm starting to see a uh, blue to orange to yellow creeping up toward the tip here I quenched this extra long this time because of how thick the material is and that is what I'm going for. Now I'm just gonna try to do that as many times as I can. And I'm just using a grinding wheel from my uh, grinder to scrape the scale and extra colors off uh, so that I can watch them run again. There's a lot of heat packed up here in that the body of the chisel here. I've hardened the tip of the chisel by quenching it in water, and now I'm letting all of that heat stored in the body of the punch to bleed up and temper it, which softens the steel slightly. It brings that hardness down so that it's not so brittle because you do not want to hit steel, even hot steel, with a brittle tool. And this, 
color change can happen really fast. So you gotta be paying attention, at least for the first couple of times you quench, cause that can, that can creep up on you and that almost got too hot there, which is why I was so quick on the quench. Now it's vital not to get the tip too hot here so that you don't ruin the temper. So if it gets, if it ever gets to the point where it feels too hot for you to hold in a bare hand, you need to douse it in water before it overheats. Alrighty, that is going to do it for this project and today's video. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like, leave a comment, hit subscribe, or ring that notification bell. If you want to support me and the channel further, please consider becoming an honorary striker on my Patreon. That link is in the description below the video, or please consider becoming a member on my YouTube channel. And as always, keep on rocking.